In recent years, various prototype wave energy plants have been built in Europe, most of them based on the old idea of the OWC, the oscillating water column, coupled underwater to ocean wave forces to make a huge air pump that sucks and blows to atmosphere through an electricity generating air turbine. The popularity of the OWC concept is probably largely due to the Wells turbine, whose symmetrical airfoil blades convert the energy of reciprocating airflows to unidirectional torque on the generator shaft. As members of a Europe-wide project, we looked closely at the basic aerodynamics of a simplified Wells turbine blade. The duct airflow combines with the speed of rotation to set the angle of attack of air to the blade. The lift and drag coefficients of the airfoil then determine the resulting generator torque. With moderate airflows, this is to the left of the vertical line, positive and useful. However, large flows produce high angles of attack and the torque goes negative into stall. By moving the blades when appropriate to keep the angle of attack always below, say, 8 degrees, it should be possible to completely avoid the serious energy wastage of stall. In our first study, we thought that the hardest part of variable pitch would be the heavily loaded blade bearings. We built a test rig to try out a planar convex hydrostatic bearing. After carefully setting flow restrictors for the total of 24 independent pads, the central bearing disc moved freely under compressive load of 20 tonnes. Meanwhile, our Portuguese associates were planning a new OWC wave power plant for the island of Pico in the Azores. They asked us to build them a variable pitch machine. It would be installed by the side of a fixed pitch wells turbine, so there would be a very valuable opportunity for comparison. By this time we had also suggested that it would be worthwhile installing a high-speed stop valve between the turbine and the wave chamber, and in 1996 we started work on the two systems. These solid works views show the final design for the turbine with 15 carbon composite blades and a novel eddy current actuator for pitching control. In low air flows, such as when the oscillating water column changes direction twice per wave cycle, the Wells turbine has very small drag losses. We were determined that our blade pitching system would not add any significant additional power burden. Here, Kevin Fitzduff is assembling the blade bearings. Earlier, we'd rejected the hydrostatic bearing design and had developed an idea for a tension torsion strap blade attachment. However, we settled on these standard bearings, which would give enough service life for the experimental Azores machine. For the first spin tests, we fitted temporary dummy spars in place of the turbine blades. These screws and washers are correction weights for the out-of-balance forces on the turbine hub. We spun it at around 500 rpm and measured the vibrations with a sensitive accelerometer. The thrust to the blade pitching rods comes from a large ball screw. It's driven through a differential gear by a pair of aluminium disc and coil assemblies. These form a pair of push-pull amplifier-driven eddy current torque motors. One of these is demonstrated by Neil Caldwell. Well, I'm going to start the spindle. What you'll see is that uh, the disc stops very quickly. So that was 5 kilowatt instantaneous at 1500 rpm. The ball screw assembly tested the limits of our machine tools. After one and a half internal revolutions, the balls, made of an unusually hard plastic called Vespel, will be diverted by the bronze inserts to an outside return ring. The grinding wheel has been dressed to an ogive profile, resembling a gothic arch, before Laird Parker finishes off the ball screw threads in a very precise operation. He made most of the turbine parts. The first assembly of the turbine in 1998 was for actuator tests. Neil connected a power amplifier to each of the two sets of coils and closed a preliminary position control loop around the actuator. In this later view, the blade pitching rods are visible. The aluminium parts have now been anodized and the steel hardened. This was during the final 1999 full-speed pitching test with all of the instrumentation in place. At 1500 rpm the turbine is spinning at its nominal speed. The actuator is running through full pitching cycles faster than should ever be required for the Azores waves. 
In these views, the front plate, which completes the strong structural sandwich of the rotor, has been removed. And the turbine is still fitted with the dummy spars. The bottom half of the yellow glass fibre shroud is in place. This should keep water out and an oil mist in. The turbine hub and actuator was now ready for shipping to Portugal. The 15 blades remain to be made. The double curvature profile was designed by the aerodynamicist Luis Gatto, our Portuguese collaborator who will be operating the turbine. The rounded leading edge of the outer end at the left here reflects the significant air compressibility effects. The blade and spar will be a single piece hollow carbon epoxy composite bonded to an aluminium alloy attachment ring. In a modified resin transfer moulding process, the various layers of carbon cloth will be kept in place by cast metal cores made of very low melting point alloy. The cores will melt out during the curing cycle to leave lightweight components. The many parts of the mould have to fit together like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle to cast a blade which will exactly fit the turbine hub and ducting. This was the first project where we made parts directly from a solid model using the SOLIDWORKS program. Solid models remove many possible errors by using a single master representation of a component to generate all the associated parts, drawings and machining commands. Our most recent lathe, the Alpha, can be manually operated or, as here, we can program it to do complex contouring. Both the inner and the outer ends of the blades must be spherical in shape to maintain very tight clearances within the turbine duct while changing pitch. This is the final cut on the mould for the melt-out core that will be used in the tail section of the blade.